Are you new to fishing coho and Puget Sound? Or maybe just looking for a few tips to catch more fish? In this three-part seminar series I gave at the 2022 Western Washington Sportsman Show, I'm going to share my inside knowledge that I use to get my clients into more fish. If you like our videos, make sure and give us a thumbs up. Or subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified when we have new videos come out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. So let's get to the seminar. Okay. Can you flatline? Yes, I encourage you to flatline. Okay, so three to four ounce sinker, bead chain swivel, six foot a liter. You can use it for the spoons, coho killers. Um, you can use it for uh, herring strip or cut plug herring. The key to it is where do you put the flat line? I like to get it in the prop wash about 60 to 65 feet back. We have caught so many coho in the prop wash that it's amazing, right? In fact, earlier this year, I had these guys out from uh, uh, Cannon Downriggers and they were filming with me. And this guy, this, one of the producers is in the boat, he says, Hey, how far out do I let this? I said, man, my setbacks are really short. I, my setbacks, coho fish, are typically 25 feet from the downriver clip. I don't go way, way out there, right? Because I like to make tight turns and maneuver through traffic. Because doesn't mean you're a great charter, but for whatever reason, guys see a charter boat and they just start falling. And the next thing you know, you got a whole pack of people. Everybody's trying to maneuver. So I like to maneuver tight. So I've got short setbacks. He lets this thing back you guys, at least 60 feet. And I'm like, and I look back, I'm like, Jeff, that's way too far. And the rod is in the rod holder. And he's looking, he goes, what? And I go, fish on, fish on. He's like, I don't have a fish on, I'm not even down. I'm not even on the downrigger. I jab the camera guy, I go, dude, go grab that rod, there's a fish on there. They were here filming pink salmon fishing in August. And it was like a nine pound ocean run coho hit it on the surface, crushed it. So surface fishing is good. That upper 20 feet can be good. And that was at one o'clock in the afternoon. So don't give up on your flat line. Don't give up on it, okay? It works. Coho killers, cut plugs, or even a plug. You could, you could put a plug back there. Five inch plug. Okay, so area selection. Guys, area selection, look, if, you, if you're out there, you're like, I don't know where to go, and you're fishing area 10 or area 9, call me, and I'll say, hey, go here, go there. I'll tell you where to go. But where's the right place to go? Well, first of all, you gotta find something that's open, right? You gotta find something that's open. And I mean, I, I heard this a lot last year. You know, I used to fish, I used to fish here, and it's been closed for three years. Where are you fishing now? I don't even know where to go. Well, go find something. Go look for the boats. Study, study some of the maps. You know, look at some of the books that have been written on Puget Sound. Um, talk, it's really important to build your network. And the, the most important thing I can say about your network, I know it's fishing, but don't bull crap them. Tell them the truth and tell them, tell them hey, I'm not bl blowing smoke up your butt, so don't blow smoke up my butt. You've got to build a network that's strong so you can trust each other, right? Area 10, if you're, if you're in Area 10, the oil docks on the east side are great. I mean, quite honestly, I can leave Shill Show, not even turn the big engine on, get in 100 feet of water, drop my gear down, and I've had fish on within five minutes, coho, and just keep trolling north and fish, fish, fish. I've had days where I've trolled toward the oil docks and never made a turn, and we were done by the time we got to the oil docks and came back. You know, Jeff Head's really good, but there's a lot of little tricks to Jeff Head, and there's a lot of little places to fish at Jeff Head. You just gotta, you know, watch what some of the other boats are doing, right? Try, you've gotta try something. If what you're trying isn't working, and you are marking fish, change your gear, make a change, do something, right? Do something. I like to have around 
40 to 45 degrees, right? 40 to 45 degrees. If you got 40 and it's not going, kick it up a little, get it to 45. And I know you're gonna look back there and go, gosh, dang, that's some angle. Yeah, those coho like it fast. 40 to 45 degrees. That's really going to help you. This is something that I was pretty surprised at. Uh, people don't like going super deep for coho. Man, we've gotten them, we've easily gotten them 150 feet. We've gotten them 165 feet. Um, don't be afraid to fish deep. And, and the way I see coho, especially in Puget Sound, is in the morning, they're going to be up super shallow. We'll start in the morning and we're fishing 20 feet. 20 feet. And about an hour later, we're down at 30, 40, 50. But again, I'm using Canon Optimum, so I cycle my downriggers. So I might be 10, 20, 30, 40. Does it mean that they're always going to be at 20 feet in the morning? No. The Lord knows where these fish are going to be. But if all of a sudden I start popping at 30, 40, what do you think I'm going to do with this guy over here at 10, 20? I'm going to put that down 40, 50 right? Because I always want differing, differing depths. And that's usually how it goes. And then you just go a little bit deeper. This year, we were catching a lot of coho very, very consistently at 60 to 75 feet. And I, man, when, you, when you're dialed in on them like that, you stick with it until it just doesn't work anymore, right? And then you start making changes. But we were consistently, man, 60 to 75 feet. I mean, I would, there were times I'd just drop one down right here to 60, drop another one to 75, and they both went off. We've had doubles on, we've had them on the flat line. I mean, this year, I think the coho fishing was really good, really good. Especially given, it was a fairly strong humpy year. It really was. And they were around quite a bit. But man, those ocean coho came in early. They were here, and by the way, I know the resident coho may not be as appealing because they're smaller, but I can't tell you how many times we're fishing for resident coho and we get the occasional one or two ocean run fish. They do come in early. It just happens. So, you know, go out there and give it a swing. And quite honestly, those, those resident coho, they're really good at eating too. Really pay attention to those electronics. Pay attention to those other anglers. Not necessarily, hey, what are you fishing? But watching those boats, are they getting hookups, right? I mean, if there's nobody around and you see, you know, you look over and that dude just hooked up and he's continuing to go, make a right, go right through where he was, right? Why not? There may be a pot of fish in there, especially if he doesn't turn around. And I'm a big, big advocate. If you get hit, bam! and you can do it, make a turn. Turn back and go right back through those fish, right? Man, that's, that's where having a short setback from your downrigger clip really pays off, really pays off, because you can turn and get back into those fish, okay? If the current is so bad that you're finding it, right, you've got, you got, it's all your kicker can do to get, get you going. If you're fighting the current, stop. Just pick up, fire up the big engine, and run to where you want to go, and just do a down, you know, troll the tide. Just don't fight the tide. If it's that strong, it's just not worth it, you know? Because really, you're not going anywhere. You're, and, and I've heard some guys go, well, if the tide's pushing me that hard, at least the, the flasher's working. Okay, I'll buy that for a dollar, flasher's working. You think the fish are just sitting there doing the same thing you are, idling basically in one spot? No, they're looking for food. So unless you're on top of a bait ball doing that, you're not in the food source. You wanna find the bait. And it should, well, before I go on to that, go to colors, your green, glow, red, anything UV, anything. But that's, consistent bait balls we saw this year. It was crazy, the amount of bait we were seeing. I think sometimes it was to our detriment 
to have bait that actually looked that good. Because it was tough. There were times, I'm not lying, it was tough getting them to bite. So we would, we, what we would literally do is fish the edges of the bait. So we we're first in line for what they're coming into. So how do you figure out where the edge of the bait is? That's where side imaging and down imaging really come into play. You can show you where those edges are, right? Uh, I get folks ask me all the time, you know, wh why do you even need side imaging? So you can see where the edge of the bait is, right? And also, also, if you've got it turned on, if you see fish on the port side and no fish on the starboard side and you're at the end of the turn, well, which way are you going to turn? I'm just saying, because without side imaging, it's a guess. You're making an educated guess as to which way to go. If you're not having to go one direction because of traffic. But at least with side imaging, you can go, well, I saw some fish over there. Let's go right. Let's go left, right? We know certain depths, depth lines work for us. We know this because we've been out there fishing for so long. But we get in such a rut, and that's to our detriment. So change things up. Remember, you too can catch coho on humpy gear. <laughs> All the way into October, I'm not making it up. 